All right, so here we are in chapter three on polynomial and rational functions. And this is section 3.2 on quadratic functions. So quadratics, those are gonna be parabolas mainly. And so what we need to do is think about all the different parts of the parabola graph. So let me draw a graph down here first off, and then we can kind of uh, look at the parts as we, as we go. So let's say that's our X and Y axis. And you know, a graph can open up or it can open down and I can't draw very well on here, but that's okay. And so <clears throat> what we have are one, the vertex. Well, that's gonna be the extreme point, whether it is a maximum or minimum, basically where the graph changes direction. So if we look here, when we're going down, that's gonna be this point right here. And that's gonna be our vertex at that point. And so this case is gonna be a minimum because it's at the bottom. Now, if we had had a graph that had gone like that, you know, that's going to be our vertex and that's going to be a max. So kind of depending on which way we go, you get either the max or the min. Now we have an axis of symmetry and that's basically a vertical line drawn through the vertex and the graph is symmetric about that axis of symmetry. So what we have is, if we have a well-drawn graph, this, is going to be our axis of symmetry. So if we folded that part over here across this axis, it's going to be equal on both sides, basically. And then we have our x-intercepts, and those are going to be the point where the parabolas cross, or the parabola crosses the uh, x-axis. Now, if they exist, they represent the zeros or the roots of the quadratic function of x for basically y equals zero. So we've got two in this case. We've got one here and one here. So if we kind of draw that over here, that's going to be our x intercepts, okay? And then we have a y intercept. That's the point where the graph crosses the y axis. And this is the value of y where x equals zero. And so that's going to be that point right there. And that's going to be our y intercept, okay? Now, it doesn't always have to have uh, x intercepts because we could be, you know, up here and go like this, or we could be down here and go like this, and then we never touch that x-axis. And so sometimes we don't actually have um, some of the intercepts possible, all right? So what is the general form of the quadratic function? Well, it's f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Now a, b, and c are all going to be real numbers. And now a cannot be zero because if a was zero, then we're not going to have an x squared term, which means then it's not going to be a quadratic. Now, what else do we know? Well, a being greater than zero means it's going to open up the vertex. So um, what happens is if a is greater than zero, we're going to get something like this. So this is going to be a greater than zero, whereas a less than zero is going to look like that. We're going to have some maximum. So that would be a max. That would be a min, depending on your a. Okay. Now our axis of symmetry is defined by a negative b over 2a. So again, it's that line that cuts the parabola in half. Okay. And it's just the, you need the b part and you need the a part. And you just take minus b divided by 2a. Okay. Now, what else do we know? Well, a quadratic formula can be used to solve for the intercepts or the zeros. So um, a lot of times we're going to come up with uh, trinomials that cannot be factored easily. And so we're going to have to use our quadratic formula. So minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay. And so that's just something we're going to have to use and remember. And, and so that's, that'll be something we have to do there. So what are some other things from our uh, uh, standard form? Well, uh, now if we put it um, into the vertex form of the quadratic function, then this is going to be the form. Now this is over here, the general form. Now the standard form is gonna look more like this. And what happens is we're gonna have a times this quantity, x minus h, the quantity squared, plus k. Now in this form here, it's really nice because we can get some items out of it. We can get the vertex, which is hk. Now h is b 
b over negative 2a or negative b over 2a, however you want to look at it. And so that was going to be that part. And what is that? That's equal to the axis of symmetry. We saw that over here. H, or well, in this case, it is called x, was b over 2a. The negative b over 2a is axis of symmetry. Well, now we're saying, well, that's the same thing as h. And so that's our axis of symmetry. And k, well, how do we find that? Well, that's just plugging in that value for h into the function and solving, and then that's our k. So we can easily get hk from this point here, okay? Now, now we have to kind of remember how transformations can affect our parabola. You know, what happens is k shifts up or down, depending on if it's positive or negative. H is going to shift left or right, again, depending on if it's positive or negative. And A is going to do our stretching or compressing, depending on which, which value we have there. Okay, So these are all things that we can get from the standard form, or if we have you know, the general form, we can get to the standard form and figure that out as well. So what if we're given the graph of a quadratic function, we can write the general equation of the function using our knowledge of transformations. We first identify the horizontal shift, our h, and then we identify the vertical shift, our k. Then we can plug that in to our equation because remember, you know, hk, it just comes from here and we plug that in and that gives us our vertex and h is this over this and k is the f of that. So we can, we can get a lot of stuff here. And so we're going to take and plug those h and k's and substitute into the values here. So we can plug it in here. Okay. Then we're going to substitute the values for x, y from any point on the graph, except for the vertex. Okay. So, you know, we could maybe plug in, in this case, if we use this one, we could plug in, you know, 0, 3. That might be a good one to plug in for our x, y point. And then we solve for the stretch factor A. Okay. Now recall, if it opens up, like this one does here, you know, it opens up, it's going to be a, um, um, da -da -da -da, a greater than zero. And if it was uh, max, then a was going to be less than zero, so it opened down. Now, then we add our a into the quadratic function with the h and k, and we basically simplify to write it in the general form, okay? So what do we have here? We have to figure out all the points we know off of our graph. So what do we have? Um, if we go over here, we have this point, which is what? The vertex. And then that gives us also the axis of symmetry. Um, we can also pull off some other points here. You know, we can say, well, what, what do we know? Well, this one looks like we have a point here, and that's going to be the point uh, zero. Three. What was this one? We didn't write it down. It was negative one, two. Okay. Um, anything else we want to do? Maybe we want to, uh, we can have this point here as well. So it's going to be what? Neg one, two, three, six. Okay. So some other points that we could use here. Now, uh, so let's, let's say, right, we have, write down what we have. Vertex is the negative one, two. We have uh, the x, y point, which is what we're supposed to find for part three. That's going to be our zero, three. Um, now, uh, what do we need to do? We need to figure out our a, right? Now, remember, if we use our, our point we just found here, we can get our a, because we, we're going to use uh, what we have for our x and y, our h and k so far. If we write that, what we have is we have uh, f of x equals a times x minus h. Well, h is a minus 1, so it's going to be x plus 1, and that's going to be squared. And then we have plus k, which is 2. Okay, so we've shifted up two and kind of shifted left one. All right, so that would be it. Now what we have to do is we have to solve for A and we're gonna use that point here. Now you could have used maybe that point there, but I'm gonna use the zero three because that gives me a zero piece. All right, so F of X, which is our Y is three equals A times X, we said was zero plus one squared plus two. Okay, now we simplify. Well. 
one squared is just one. So we have three equals one times a, which is a, and then plus two, so subtract two, a equals one. Okay, so we know a is equal to one. So now what we have is we have a, we have the rest of the function, so we have f of x equals a, which is one, so we can leave it out, x plus one squared plus two. Okay, now that is the standard form. That's what we have. Now this one, uh, they want us to write in general form. Okay, so to write it in general form, what do we have to do? Well, basically we're gonna have to square this and then add our two. So this is a perfect square basically, so that's gonna give us the first one squared plus two times x times one, the, basically multiply those together. One times x is x times two is two x, plus the last one squared plus one, and then we have plus two. And so our general form is, uh, let's maybe write this like this, f of x equals x squared plus two x plus three. And that would be my general form. Okay, now again, maybe they wanted this one, and that is the standard form. So depending on which one they asked for, you can get to either one of them pretty quick, and this one's easiest to get to the general form, and that's also easiest to get from our graph, okay? All right, so here, uh, given the quadratic function in general form, find the vertex and write in standard form. Then what we need to do, okay, well, we first have to identify A, B, and C. We find H, which is the X coordinate of the vertex. Remember, it's minus B over 2A. And so we just have to plug in what we have for B and what we have for A and get our H. And then once we do that, well, we can find K by plugging in H into our original function. And so that's f of negative b over 2a, or f of h, depending on how you want to look at it. Then we can write it into this standard form, where a is found in the general form of the equation. Okay, so we're going from f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c to f of x equals a times x uh, minus h squared plus k. Okay, so this a and this a are the same. We have to find the h by doing minus b over 2a, and that will give us this. And then we plug in that into the function, and we find that, and then we plug that in, and that's our k, okay? All right, so what are we going to do? Well, first, I'm going to write this in standard form by rewriting it into uh, the uh, right form here. I'm going to have x squared minus 6x plus 13. So I'm in decreasing power, so I know that then a equals 1, b equals negative 6, and c equals 13, okay? So that helps me figure out what, what I do have. Now, I need to find h. So h is equal to a minus b. Well, b is a negative 6, so minus a minus 6 over 2 times a, which is 1. So that gives me a plus 6 over 2, which is 3. Okay, so that is part of my vertex. That's three comma. Now I have to figure out what K is. And K, remember, is F of H, which is three, okay? So I plug that into this uh, piece here. So that's gonna be three squared minus six times three plus 13. And so I'm gonna have nine minus 18 plus 13. So that's gonna be a minus five plus that. So it's gonna give me Four. Okay, so that then gives me my vertex, which is also, remember, h comma k. And now, if I want to write it in this form, I'm pretty much done. I have, you know, I have the, the vertex 3, 4, which is h, k. I know that a is equal to 1 because my original function a was 1. And so I can say f of x equals a, which is 1, times x minus three squared plus four. And I have my function in the standard form. OK. 
Okay. And so that's, that's going to be how we get to it. And again, we just have to go from our original function and get it back into the standard function. Now going another way, we did that on the previous one. You know, we, we got the standard function and all we had to go is multiply it out and then simplify and we get our general form. But going this way, it takes a little bit more work, but we still, we can get there and, and it's not, not super difficult. All right, so I'll pause there and come back in a little bit.